Hi there, it's Nicole from Mama Elephant, and today I've got some Halloween favor bags featuring the new Plushoween stamps and coordinating dies and the adorable favor bag from Mama Elephant. And this is this project is based on the Valentine Valentine's favor bags that I shared back in February, and I'll link to those at the end of the video. Very similar with the opening, a cute critter peeking out. And then, of course, that this has Halloween greetings instead of Valentine's. So I have pre-die cut all of my pieces, the favor bags from the dark gray cardstock, the rectangle here using the rectangle scalloped and stitched die, part of the favor bag die collection. The heart opening is going to be die cut from this, and I'm going to show you how I get that perfectly lined up. That is an improvement from my last video. And then some little tags. The tag die is also from the Favor Bag die collection. Those are die cut from orange cardstock. And I'll be using the cute plushoween images to adorn these bags. I've got a little acetate too that'll be behind that window opening, that's gonna ensure whatever you put in the favor bag doesn't come tumbling out. So I'm gonna take the, a flat front of the favor bag. You wanna do this before you assemble the, the favor bags. Lay out my rectangle. I'm gonna secure that with a piece of post-it tape or just any low-tack tape. Secure the heart die. This is gonna be the opening or the window and run this through my die cutting machine. I'm gonna go ahead then, I have already done that, pop that up. It will not go through both layers. It's only gonna go through one, but the great thing is, is it's gonna leave an impression in that back paper, in this case, the favor bag. So I'm gonna just pop out that black heart there, go ahead and just put that other, or the heart die right back in there and run it through the machine and it's perfectly gonna die cut. So I did that for all three bags. You can do that for as many bags as you have. Just simply run that through. It's perfectly going to line it up because you're going to already have an impression to line that up again. The More Candy Please Greeting from the Plushoween stamp set is stamped on the little orange gift tags using black ink. Then each of the frames, I'm going to take those and put those in the misty and line up a greeting from Plushoween and the spider web image. I'm gonna stamp these with Versamark on each of those frames or each of those little front panels. Ink all of that up, stamp it with Versamark, and then heat emboss with white embossing powder so it really pops off the bag. Or I really, I, all, I like white embossing on dark cardstock anytime, but at Halloween, I think it really is showy and shows off the greeting and that spider web. You can even switch up the greeting. I went ahead and switched one of them to You Are Fantastic. The other two bags are gonna read Too Cute to Spook. Once all three of these panels are done, or as many of them as you are creating, Go ahead and heat set that, and then it's time to stamp the images from Plushoween on some smooth white cardstock using an ink for Copic coloring, and then I'm simply going to color them in. The colors of ink I'm using, or the colors of markers I'm using, are shown across the bottom of the screen. I'm starting with the bear first. In fact, I believe this is the only critter from this stamp set that I hadn't previously used. I am also linking at the end of this video to another project using this stamp set. It's a card, and I used several of the other animals from that on the card, just not this bear. The bear was the first image I thought of with these favor bags. You could use any kind of images that you have these just work fantastic for Halloween. These would be cute to make as treat bags for a classroom at school or to give as little gifts to maybe those special trick-or-treaters that come over, grandkids, nieces, nephews, um, neighborhood kids, whoever. I think they would just be really fun to treat, to tuck something special into those and then give those out for Halloween. Now I'm coloring in these images and I realized right away, part of the image isn't gonna be shown. So instead of going through 
all the effort of coloring parts of the image that aren't going to be shown only to never have that scene. I'm using my frame as a guide and I'm not going to color in any of the rest of that. So kind of the bottom edge of the pumpkin down is where it's not going to be seen. So I'm not going to worry about finishing coloring the bear's legs. I'll concentrate on the rest of him and make sure that that's colored really well, but I'm going to follow that same thing for the other two Im large images that are going to be tucked behind the window. If you don't have to color it, don't do it. Um, it's never going to be seen and it's just a lot of extra work. I'm going to skip over here and do the spiders next, which I think are really cute. Um, I absolutely hate spiders. Um, if you know me, it's kind of funny. and but I love coloring them and adding them to my Halloween projects. I love decorating with fake ones at Halloween time, but real ones are not my favorite thing. So kind of silly. Next, I'll move on to my next little guy here. These can be colored so many different ways. I did a different colorway for my Halloween card that I shared last week. Just an example of how you can color them however you want. While I went with more neutral tones of colors, you could go all out crazy and color these guys with all kinds of different colors. Um, maybe e even in Halloween colors, they do not have to be actual. These are illustrated very much to look like plush stuffed animals so they could definitely be in whatever colorway you prefer. I love the little bunny ears on this guy. I think they're so sweet. And if you the I didn't use the bunny for this card, but if you did, I think it's cute that they are just alternating what headwear they're wearing. Um, I think that's really clever. And probably if I had thought about it, I could have tucked both of those in the same window um, and went ahead and had two animals in that window. I'm going to start with his little vampire cape here. I love the little fangs sticking out. It's one of the reasons that I changed the greeting to you are fantastic for that favor bag because I thought it would fit with this a lot better coloring with some red markers, the inside of his cape and the band around the top of his hat, and then some cool grays for the rest of the hat, just like I did for the spiders, and the lapels of his vampire cape will also have that the same cool gray colors, leaving just a thin little strip there where I'm going to have a lighter cool gray that's kind of the highlight area or portion of the hat. And then I really messed around with a lot of different marker colors for this guy um, and settled on the ones that are shown across the bottom of the screen. Even if there were a couple others that I tried here and there on little parts of the image, I tried to, to blend those out and cover them up because they just really didn't work. And I really had to, because you can see a lot of that yellow undertone here. And then I'm blending in with some oranges. And this is really what's going to make this little guy come to life. Once I have all of my images completely colored, I'm going to take the coordinating plush -a ween dies for the spiders and the animals and die cut them. And then take a black glaze pen and add detail to the eyes on all six of these images. It's going to make the eyes really pop. It's something I tend to do all the time. One of my markers let out a blob of ink. You can see there on his one ear. Um, I ended up fixing it by going around it with a white opaque marker after I die cut it. There was no way of fixing it and I didn't want to recolor it at that point. I have no idea. I hadn't even refilled that marker recently. I can't believe it did that. So I was kind of frustrated, but anyway, there was a fix for it. So that's always good. 
I am ready to assemble the favor bags. I'm gonna start by removing any backing paper from the acetate, if there is some, and then putting adhesive on the back of the black frame that goes on the front of the bag. And I'm actually gonna start with a different one, so let me put some adhesive on the back of this one first. I'm going to tuck the critter then, or the animal, whatever you wanna call them, right behind the frame. So get that centered. I'm just trying to pick it up with a little of the adhesive. So there's what that's gonna look like. And go ahead and put some strong adhesive behind him so that he's sticking to the front of the acetate window. The animals are actually on the outside, not on the inside of the bag, if that makes sense. And then put the acetate on the back of this panel. Go ahead and make sure you've got really good strong adhesive. I like the Glue Glider Pro Permatac for this. And then take the front of the favor bag while it's still flat, this makes it so much easier, and replace the front of that frame there. You can go ahead and add any additional embellishments, like I'm going to add the spider here, using some glue dots. And then to make it look like the spider's coming down from a web, I'm going to draw a line. And I was just going to hand draw it, and I couldn't commit to it, so I decided to take a ruler and draw a straight line instead, which I ended up liking a lot better. And my marker or my pen is not working very great. So I had to scribble that. Sorry that I'm leaning over my paper so much. I wanted to make sure I got it lined up. So there is the cute little spider coming down from his web right above the greeting. Next, I'm going to fold the favor bag right on the score lines, and then I always like to take the Teflon bone folder and fold all of the panels and sides and everything in, and then crease them really good with the bone folder before I assemble the bag. This is gonna make sure you have really nice creases, and it's also going to help keep the bag together so much better than just tr folding it. And the Teflon bone folder should not leave any marks on your paper. Some bone folders will, but this one will not. And it's fantastic for, I use it all the time when I assemble a 3D project like a gift box or a gift bag or something like this. And I use it when I score and fold just a regular standard card as well. Adhesive goes on that little bottom tab and along the side tabs and then on one of the inside pieces on one part of the bag. Each favor bag requires two die cut panels to assemble the bag. And that's gonna keep the bottom together and the sides. You're simply gonna just kind of hold it together there until you get it lined up and then just simply, I like to kind of pinch the sides to make sure that adhesive is nice and tight. I'll tie or put a little confetti, put a treat inside the bags, and tie the gift tag to the top with some Halloween twine. Thanks for joining me today for these Halloween favor bags featuring the Mama Elephant Plushoween stamps and dies. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Halloween stamps and dies from Mama Elephant that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.